Hello everyone, Edwina here, AKA EB, AKA Coach, uh, AKA Miss Blowing Smoke, AKA Queen of Boutique. I have heard it all and I am all of that. I am the owner, operator of Blowing Smoke Cigar Lounge located in Lancaster, Texas, which is about 15 to 20 miles south of Dallas, Texas. I have something special for you. I'm about to launch my new show, Shop Talk, the business and culture of cigars, where we talk all things cigar industry. This show is gonna be education. This show is gonna be revelation. This show is gonna be impartation, but I simply want to provide information to you as a cigar enthusiast. It doesn't matter if you're a novice or an expert, this show is for you. Or maybe you're looking to open up your very own cigar shop or cigar lounge. I believe that this show is for you. Or perhaps you want to combine your business and entrepreneurial efforts with your passion for cigars and you just need a few ideas. I think this show is for you. So do me a favor. Click that subscribe button. Click that bell. Share it with your friends, share it to your pages, whatever you like. I just simply want to provide educational tools for you as a cigar enthusiast. All right, are you ready? Because I'm ready. Shop talk in three, two, one, let's go. go cigar of choice for this episode is definition cigars 919 habano one of my faves if i had to pick a top three uh, this bad boy would slide in it um dc my guys uh love to you on this first episode definition cigars 919 habano check it out we have it in our humidor all right so <clears throat> for today I want to talk about something that may seem fundamental to some. It may seem like a no-brainer to others. Uh, but this actually is the most dreaded conversation for me personally. Other tobacconists, other retailers may feel the same way. Um, but today I want to talk about the importance of why a cigar purchase should be required. Why is a cigar purchase required when you walk into a cigar shop? Now, for the expert, it's like, hey, for the enthusiast, for the aficionado, aficionada, it's like, duh. No, actually, it's not duh. <laughs> this conversation I have, if not every day, I have it every other day with a customer, okay, with someone, um, not even just first timers. I have this conversation over and over and over again. So, I'm going to give you three points of why it is important. Again, this is a no-brainer to you. Maybe I'm not talking about you. Maybe I'm not talking to you. Uh, but some of the stories I'm going to tell you might blow your mind. Uh, so sit and stay for them. I'm not going to keep you long. Uh, number one, cigars are the sale. That's the sale. That's how we make money. Now, there's a difference between a bar versus a BYOB establishment. Today I'm gonna to talk about the BYOB establishment because one, that's the type of establishment that I'm running in this location. Now a bar is tricky because you have certain city ordinances, you have uh, state laws where you can or you cannot combine liquor with cigars. And if you do, your liquor sales has to be 51% or X percent versus your cigar sales. Things get tricky, all right? If you're looking to own your own cigar shop, make sure you check your city, check your state, see if it's possible if you wanna have a bar as well as a humidor, check that out. But today, like I said, we're gonna talk about the BYOB establishment. So number one, um, overhead. 
overhead is the number one factor of why purchasing a cigar from the shop is important. Overhead simply is what it says, overhead. So if you look up, when you walk into a cigar shop, there are certain bills, there are certain expenses that have to be paid. The building has to be paid, whether you purchase your own building or whether you're renting. It doesn't matter. You still have a lease, you have a mortgage, you have rent. You have something to pay. To, to pay. You have a staff uh, that, that needs to be paid, or if you're running the shop solo dolo, then you need to pay yourself. If not, you're going to burn out, uh, and it's not going to feel like it's worth it to you. Um, you have your aesthetics, you know, what type of furniture, what is the look, what's the design, uh, even the build out. How much money did you pump into the building before the doors were even open, before the first customer walk through the door. You have the essentials, uh, you have restrooms, you know, you, you need to, to furnish that, you need to be able to put uh, the basics, toilet paper, paper towels in that. All of those things have to be deducted, right, and have to be deducted from your cigar sales, which, again, cigars are the sale. If you don't have cigars in your humidor and you're a BYOB establishment, uh, good luck. It's going to be really hard. It's going to be an uphill battle the entire time, and you're going to be questioning yourself whether you want to do this or not. So, again, overhead. The next thing you have is um, these certain investments. You have the brick-and-mortar investment. Again, did you buy the building? Are you renting a uh, humidor investment? How much money are you going to pump into the humidor before you even open up the doors? Depending on the size of your humidor, uh, you can shell out anywhere between 50,000 50, to 150,000 just to start. Now, you can start with less, you know, but again, cigars are to sell, so the more offerings or the more facings you have, the more facings you bring through the door. I like to say new faces bring new faces. New faces in the humidor bring new faces through that door. Uh, you might want to do entertainment at your establishment. I don't know if you're into music, bands, whatever. Uh, we sprinkle those types of things in. That is an invest investment. And guess what? That is separate from the cigar purchase, right? The cigar purchase is the daily. But once you start adding bands or DJ or um, some type of artist or a musician, these people need to be paid. And that's why sometimes you may see an extra charge uh, associated with that particular event plus the cigar purchase, which covers the house, which covers the building, which covers you at going to the restroom, which covers you sitting down in one of the chairs that were purchased, which means you took up a chair for somebody else, right? So that's kind of how that works. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. There was a gentleman, <clears throat> uh, he comes into this, this location uh, and I've never seen him before, but I see a lot of people, so maybe I just forgot. So he comes in, he sets up uh, his cigar case, you know, had his cutter's lighters, a nice offering of cigars inside the case. He set up, he had snacks, uh, he had his liquor, he was ready to go. All he needed was a cup, some ice, some mixers. Um, so I gave him a five-minute grace period. Actually, it was probably a little longer just because I didn't know him and I wanted to see what he was going to do. Maybe he needed to get comfortable. He was wrapping up a conversation. Uh, so once he was done with his conversation, he gets up and he walks towards me and he said, hey, can I get some ice and can I get a Sprite? And I said, yeah, you actually, you can. I said, we have that, um, but can I get you to purchase a cigar out of the humidor? And so he then says, no, no, I, I, don't, I don't want anything. I'm going to smoke my own. <laughs> so I laughed uh, and I said, well, actually, uh, we have a house rule that says, uh, we would like for you to purchase a cigar from the house. And he said, no, I, I, I don't want to purchase from the house. I want to smoke my own. So I said, sir, it's actually on the door. Um, we have gone the extra mile of putting a cigar purchase is required on our door. That's part of our decal. We have paid to have that placed on our door. We also invested, because it was such a problem, we invested into a chalkboard um, that's actually written on there, cigar purchase is required. Um, you know, per visit, that's, that's, that's just what the rules are. So he says, but I don't want to. I said, well, we also have um, something where you can 
pay the cutting fee. And our cutting fee just happens to be $10. Um, not too expensive, you could pay that to be able to sit in uh, in this environment and enjoy the ambiance and smoke your cigars. And he said, no, I, I don't want to smoke my own. And so I said, okay, sir, well, uh, unfortunately, these are the rules in order to stay inside to smoke. And so he gets an entire attitude and he decides to pack up all of his stuff that took him five, 10 minutes to, to unpack and he proceeds to leave. Now, this conversation went left. It went left, it didn't have to, if only we could abide by the rule, by that house rule. Maybe that house rule for some cigar shops is to buy two. Maybe it is a $20 minimum. Whatever it is, if you don't know what that rule is, go ahead and ask that rule. Uh, but I would say go ahead and assume when you walk into any cigar shop, any cigar lounge, that you need to hit that humidor and buy at least one cigar. It's really that simple. Number two of why purchasing a cigar from the house is required. It is flat out cigar etiquette. If you want to partake in this culture inside of a cigar shop, I'm not saying in the park or th that's different. If we're talking about coming inside a cigar lounge, in inside of a cigar shop, it is etiquette. This is a disposable income hobby. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be a million billionaire or a hundred thousandaire. Uh, we have all types of smokers in here and we have cigars uh, for, for that line of income as well, whether it's a five dollar cigar all the way up to, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollar cigar. This is a leisure hobby and it is cigar etiquette to purchase from the house. It is costing that tobacconist, that, that retail owner, uh, it's costing them money to provide the basics, air conditioning, heating. I mean, we, we know that. But in order to create the ambiance, where, whether you have the laid back furniture, uh, whether you have more of the bar top social type of furniture, all of those accruedments cost. Whether you have um, music in the background. We talked about live music, uh, which are certain licenses in order to have that. That is a, another expense. That's another cost. So in order to take part inside of a cigar lounge, it is flat out etiquette to do so. Now, let me give you an example. <laughs> Another story, uh, and all of these are true stories. These are true stories. I can't make this stuff up. Another story of a conversation that went left. This one actually took place in our original establishment uh, back in Duncanville. And, uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. It, it was a particular Sunday because there was a group of guys that liked gathering on Sundays. You know, I think they started a the habit in football. Uh, but this was kind of at the end. Well, COVID's not over. But this was after we opened the doors back up when COVID hit the world hard, like when the pandemic um, was at one of the, the first hype, right, is there's been different uh, peaks of the pandemic, but this was the original one. Everybody's looking around like what is going on? Businesses are closing. So at that point we were operating at a certain percentage. So there was a percentage, a percentage, 50%, 75. Um, and so every one of our chairs mattered, right? And those percentages dependent on the square footage um, of your business which depends on the capacity per the city of your business. So we had to work off those numbers. So the gentleman comes in, and I saw him uh, walk straight in, and he, he ducks off into our member's lounge. At that time, we had um, separate spaces uh, for our member's lounge, like we do here. Um, so he comes in, he has his bottle in hand, and he sits down. So I go into the doorway, um, and we had the doors open so that we could work the percentages uh, make sure that we stayed on top of that. So I go into the doorway and I watch him sit down. So he's sitting with his crew, you know, they're hee hee and ha ha and having a good old time. He pops open his bottle of champagne uh, <laughs> and he starts to drink it out of the bottle to each his own. I would have given him a cup, but he starts to drink it out of, the, out of a bottle. I gave this guy 10 minutes. Maybe he needed to get something off his chest with his friends. I don't know, I gave him 10 minutes. I then approached him and I said, hey, 
Are you going to get a cigar from me today? Mind you, he, he would come in periodically, so I knew who he was. Uh, so I asked him, are you going to get a cigar from me today? And he said, choice words, um, ends up calling me out of my name. Um, I don't know if he walked in and he was under the influence, uh, but the conversation was real foul. Uh, it was unnecessary all over buying a cigar, which at that time, I think our cheapest cigar uh, was 650. Again, whatever you make is what you make, what you can afford is what you can afford. But if you're gonna walk in a cigar shop um, into an establishment that someone is paying to be in that space, um, that someone is paying in order to have these cigars in the humidor, hum humidor best believe um, that proprietor, that tobacconist is gonna need something in return. Simple, flat out, it is called cigar etiquette. That's number two. And number three, we are in the business of making money. Flat out, that's what it is. I know you like money, we all like money, we need to survive, but in this investment, your number one goal is to make money. I understand that's a passion. Um, you may want to create an environment where a group of friends can come over and hang out. But at the end of the day, survival, we are in the business to make money. In order to make money, we have to sell cigars. Cigars for us uh, are maybe 80, upwards of 80% 80, 80 of our revenue pie. Uh, there may be a shop that has paraphernalia, whether it is uh, clothing, uh, t-shirts, uh, whether it is um, cutters, lighters, uh, cigar cases, boxes, all of those things are important. You might have a cigar shop that sells memberships, which we do. Uh, but that at the end of the day, we have to figure out how to make money. So if you're walking in, enjoying, again, the ambiance, sucking up good air, uh, and not spending money, best believe that foot traffic becomes a detriment to the success and the survival of a business. That's why you see a lot of cigar shops going out of business, especially after the pandemic. I believe that small businesses are what drive and keep a community, um, a city, a state. I think that's what keeps us going. So number three is we are in the business of making money. Now, I'll give you my last story. Um, this happened in this location. This is a positive story, unlike the other two. Uh, there was a cigar group. <clears throat> I believe it was a fraternity, but we'll keep them uh, nameless. There was a cigar group that came through and they organized a smoke out. I knew before, ahead of time, they informed me, hey, we're gonna have X amount of people to come through. I think they ended up having between 20 and 30 people that came through, uh, which thank God our establishment were able to hold uh, sizable groups uh, of that nature. So about 20 or 30 of them came through. Now in that group, there were about five or six that did not patronize. They didn't buy a cigar. Now, as a retailer, as a tobacconist, uh, as a proprietor, I could say, oh, um, you know, they bought enough. Well, the truth of the matter is, if we do that, if I do that, then the next time they enter, they think that that's okay to do. So I would suggest nipping it in the bud off top. So those five or six people didn't buy. I waited a few minutes. Uh, we actually had a host that set up that smoke out. Uh, he was great. He would come by, ask me, was I okay? Is everybody buying? Is there anything? His group, he, he handled the situation. So at that time I said, hey, you got about five or six guys, uh, particularly um, this guy, this guy, you know, I was able to point him out. Um, they haven't patronized, they didn't buy anything. And so he said, okay, don't worry, I'll handle it. Uh, at that time he, ha he had the conversation with his people, with his crew, uh, with his group. Um, which took that pressure off of me of having the conversation where it could go left or right. Plus, this is something that people don't talk about, as a female approaching a male, approaching um, a dominant figure, depending on that person, that might not go well. 
Some, some people do not like that information coming from a female, which is another monkey wrench uh, of a hurdle that, that we, that I have to jump. But the host of that event, of that smoke out, he talked to his guys and immediately they got up and they went and they patronized and they bought from the shop, which helps us. So again, the importance of why buying a cigar from your local cigar shop, from your local cigar lounge is vital. It is important. It is vital to us staying in business and securing longevity in this industry, in this cigar industry. Number one, cigars are the sale, particularly for a BYOB establishment. It may be uh, different for um, a bar, it may be different for some, someone that has a bar or someone that sells food, but if they only offer cigars, cigars are the sale. Number two, it is etiquette of taking part in this leisure, taking part in this disposable income hobby. Uh, number two, it is cigar etiquette to buy from the house. And then lastly, but not least, the third one is uh, as a business owner, as a cigar shop and lounge owner, as a tobacconist, it is vital that we are in the business of making money. If we put money in the humidor, that's our sale. We want you to buy from the humidor, and that's our return on our investment. All right? I enjoyed you guys. Again, check us out, 1604 North Interstate 35 in Lancaster, Texas. I am smoking a DC 919, the 919 Habano, and that's this episode of Shop Talk. See you next time.